Hey, dit is Sharon voor Rinse Station en je luistert naar Interview onder vuur of Interview aan de vaar. Veel plezier. Uh, Sharon, uh, thanks for so much for uh, taking the time to talk with me today on Interview Under Fire. Inter interesting times we are in, to say at the least. Uh, how are you? How have things been for you and your band as of late? And uh, how long have you guys uh, been on lockdown? It's, it's, what's the vibe over there in the uh, Netherlands? It's, it's, is, it, is it good? Is it, I don't know, well, are people tight? Well, what we had here in the Netherlands is what they call, of course, uh, <clears throat> they made, gave it the name itself. It's called an Intelligent Lockdown. Which means that... The, <laughs> yeah. I love that, I love that. Yeah, yeah I love that, me too. Um, what they, well, they're hoping that, uh, that uh, the country itself will be responsible enough to um, keep themselves to the rules. It won't be police uh, trying to look every time where you're going and checking up on you. And you don't need official papers to go to your work like in Italy is. So they said, okay, we think that way we can op uh, keep the shops, certain shops open, like uh, you know, the clothes, the fashion shops are have always been open. Some big stores have closed, but and what what the, the, the shops themselves did, for instance, they came with their own initiatives, like only a maximum of let's say uh, five people at a time, or big shops maybe uh, 50 people at a time. But then okay. because they could still guarantee the the distance between people. And everybody was really, well, th this really worked uh, very well. So applying to some, uh, you know, to everyone's intelligence, uh, <laughs> it worked, uh, apparently. Um, but um, as time, you know, it became longer and longer, they, exp uh, they, they extended the time every time with two weeks or three weeks that we had to stay inside because they said, okay, d don't go outside unless you need to. And if someone's sick in your family, don't go out at all and order your stuff at home. And that's what happened. And, and eventually uh, the, the, um, the people that got sick, well, they decreased very quickly. So luckily we are in a partially unlocked situation now. So we can go uh, soon again, also to uh, restaurants again, as long as they can uh, make a difference, um, how do you say, layout that people are, that people can keep the distance, you know, the one and a half meter distance, because that's the new, the new society now, and uh, that is something that we have to look at until there's a vaccine or a medicine. And and what the happen, what for us as musicians, it's um, they said like, okay, there can't be any big events above a hundred people at any time, so no festivals, nothing, until there's a vaccine or a, some kind of cure for this uh, COVID-19. COVID so it's, um, yeah, it's waiting. <laughs> waiting until we can do something again. Hopefully it will come soon, but these things take time, unfortunately. Yeah, so in the States, we have, of course, I'm sure you're hearing all the chaos going on in the States. People are, some people are taking it seriously, some people are just not taking it seriously. I've seen so many different groups within and we're going through like a phase one phase two phase three yeah. phase four i don't know if you guys have the same thing but it's uh, I, I don't phases. know how, how yeah i don't know how things are going to be it's just the uncertainty going from here on out and being stuck at home you know like we are how yeah. are you keeping up with your vocals i'm sure do you live in a place where you can just crank up and like practice i know i know you live with your family and and uh, yeah. uh you're uh, robert robert westerholt you know he's your, your partner yeah. You can just like belt out without your kids or anyone going crazy or the neighbors. <laughs> oh, you know, I've got, uh, we've got two small studios at home, which are awesome. Semi isolated, but far enough from the main room so they, that I can sing as loud as I want. And we have our own recording studio, which is, uh, you know, a silence room. Like you can not hear anything outside of that room. So it's, you know, I'm fine, you know, and I can continue working, like writing new songs and stuff like that. So that's, that's no problem. We are, we are used to work at home. It's just that you have now the homeschooling added to that, which, which right. makes the chaos in house, of course, in the house, of course, like, I need this, I need that. Can you help me with this? Like, ah, <laughs> go away. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if there's a convenience that because you have another uh, member in the band as part of the family, is it a convenience that you can Robert can just like chill and just like just write lyrics? I was like, hey, we got all this time. What do we do? You know, yeah, and 
Well, of course, so far we've only been focusing on the new songs we've written and um, we, 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 we recorded a, a video and we just started editing actually because everything was shut down just after the last uh, recordings that we did for the video. And then all of a sudden the whole world turned out, uh, you know, was turned out upside down. And uh, so we were able to work at home for quite a nice time actually. So it wasn't that bad for us. And eventually, of course, we were sad to postpone the tour and, and the festivals and everything. But yeah. as long as it's postponed, it's okay in a way, you know, we can guarantee, um, you know, still uh, for our crew and everything that there's going to be work when that when it gets, you know, this whole thing, this thing gets solved, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so at the moment it's okay and hopefully it won't take too long. But um, yeah, it's nice because I, you know, he can write stuff and I can write stuff and we can work together. We actually can't work together. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the reason why he's not in the band anymore live because we don't work well with each other constantly. So it, it's like two captains on the same boat. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you got you got to figure out where the priorities lie. It's 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 that's okay. You know, it doesn't yeah. have to be exactly the way it should be. There's a formulaic yeah. way to go about this. You know. Yeah, exactly. And we have very different uh, things that we find important, but somehow it works together eventually. Uh, if we add both things, eventually we both need both uh, kind of way of working. But anyway, but not in one room. So he will write something or I will write something and I will pass it over the wall next door. It's like, okay, good luck with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hear if you like it or hate it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's not a that's that, Yeah, that's not a bad way to go about it. It looks like you have everything in store as far as the plans yeah, are that, concerned. That's true. Yeah. Are you talking, and what are you talking about the Entertain You video? The because you yes, said you put together yes, a video. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I want to jump on that in, in a second. But does this pandemic, uh, since you're talking about all these activities you're doing now that you're at home, does it open up new things for you personally and artistically that you may have not noticed before? I've spoken to many artists and they're talking about, man, I, uh, you know, cooking. I've never thought I'd be cooking this much in two months, <laughs> but here I am. Now I can now I can just make spaghetti out of scratch, you know, and some people have taken up art. Some, some people have taken up reading, you know, video games, whatever it is you may find yourself busy with. And uh, just curious, like, like from, from your perspective, what have you discovered, you know, I don't know, cooking with Sharon or something like going live or something like that with the fans? That'd be well, pretty, tried, just an idea. I yeah, I, I just, I did do uh, a lot of things that I normally don't have time, like cooking. I like to cook, actually. And to bake a lot of stuff um but uh another thing is that i like to make playlists actually uh, i didn't know i liked it this much because in the past i hardly had any time so i just woo, just made something and just like okay it's done you know i did it I said this for you guys it's on on the streaming platforms and and now i did it really with a with a purpose because now i made this uh i, I started working out that's something that i did discover at home normally i go to a personal trainer now I just do it at home in front of my TV and found a really good program, a Dutch program that doesn't have music in the background, which is really nice because then I can put my own music at the same time and still hear, hear her talk. And uh, I made a playlist because I couldn't find something that I like myself very much. So I thought, um, you know, I'm going to make a playlist that's uh, metal and rock songs, uh, like for 95% of the songs. And uh, that has a high intensity uh energy and uh up and songs you know like really up tempo songs yeah and they, so it got, went from punk to uh metal really rock song so um and uh, i really enjoyed that doing that and, and now i already have like a playlist that's two and a half and 45 minutes long and i'm still building up more songs that i like so it's and i'm discovering new music songs uh, you know songs from bands that i the bands already knew but i didn't know the songs from them and old songs that I like that I forgot about and you know I put it all there so going from ACDC to Shine Down to uh, Papa Roach you know and, and really high intensity so I and um, my oldest she's 14 she discovered awesome. all the bands because she started listening to my list and she said oh, I love these songs and she's finally turning into like a, a yeah a metal slash rock persons like wow i didn't expect her to become one of those because she was more like more general music that she was listening to which is also fine but uh yeah so whatever the kids are listening to these days you know yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's all fine you know i don't you know the, every every uh every generation has their own heroes and stuff like that but 
I was really happy to see that she really enjoyed certain bands. So, so I was like, okay, she really likes Bring Me ba Bring Back the Horizon. So I was like, um, <laughs> so it's, it's like, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was really happy about it. But I'll tell you the name for it, for it so may, maybe you would like to check it. If, if oh, of course. Are. are you working out? Yeah, well, now I have to, you know, because uh, <laughs> here's, here's, th here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though, because I used to work out from home. And this was maybe, I don't know, five, six years ago when I changed, like, literally everything in my diet, which I, I haven't had a soda in, like, eight years. So, but, you know, so wow. so when I so when I actually started doing that and then and then I started, you know, getting promotions at jobs and then now I'm like, okay, now I'm getting these discounts. I got to take care, take advantage of these gyms. Then I went to these <laughs> gyms and now it's, okay, now it's back to square one where I started. So it's, well, so, yeah, I mean, working from home, it's, you know, it's, it's still different because, you know, I have other people, you know, living with me as well. So it's, you got to make sure you don't get in everyone's way. But yeah, yes, absolutely. yes, I am working out at home. You know, I got a dog. You know, sometimes I can even <laughs> take him out yeah, for walks. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, the the, the 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 playlist is called uh, very uh, suited suiting to this uh, time of uh, that, that we're in now. It's called yeah. the um, the uh, oh uh, oh god. Uh, I'll give you a second. The corona the corona quarantine sweated out workout. <laughs> Let me save this here. Corona quarantine. Yeah. Sweated out sweat workout. Out. Yeah, sweated out workout. Very long. I have to probably after a while I'm just gonna call it the sweated out workout because it's much easier. <laughs> but this mo at this moment it's still called like that. You can find it on Apple Music, but also on Spotify and those kind of platforms. So are you still adding new music daily to it? Did I try Not to daily. Like I try to um uh, in the beginning I did it like weekly. Um, yeah. but it's you know, um it's very hard to find songs that fit the list. So I, I'm just every time now, because we are just mostly focused on a new single, I haven't the last three weeks or two weeks, but I'm going to do that again. But there's, it's two and a half, two hours, 45 minutes. So you have. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely enough time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And by the way, Sharon, let me know how we're doing on time. Um, so oh. just. We're fine, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, because there's just so much I want to talk to you about because I was so excited for this interview. Yeah, I'm so, sorry, uh, I'm going from left to right, so just... Uh, no, 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 you, no you're, you're totally too. fine. You're totally <laughs> fine. Just, just relax. So, so real quick, I wanted to touch base on, you know, ha having kids in the house with you. Like, I wonder how that's like because now you have you have kids you're, you're raising for yourself and you're a music artist. I wonder if, if as a parent, do you feel as... I'm not a parent, but, you know, you know, you know of course, my mom, you know raising someone like me she's into the music she's into the in the business and now you're in it i wonder if there's some kind of convenience for the for the child that they see my mother you know uh you know you know she's a music artist and she has it's it's all i feel like it's preordained that she has all these bands at her disposal she can just discover it of course they're gonna jump into pop music you know we, i have a little sister she's in a cape <laughs> She's, she, you know, she's in a K-pop and K-pop, I, I, you know, I believe it's, it's just a huge thing nowadays. It's still getting bigger. And <laughs> I saw that look on your face, but then, <laughs> you know, and then, but, but of course you want to be a bit good influence. I, I wonder how your children are picking up on the music that you listen to. Are they, you know, getting the playlist from you or do you have to watch what they listen to? It doesn't matter. Uh, well, what, what, what happens in our household is like, I'm working on this list, for instance, and I'm starting to make these vlogs. So I started baking apple turnovers and I put the music that I made to promote the, the, the playlist on the background. And they were watching me do this like, what is she doing? <laughs> never, she never makes it. <laughs> she doesn't have time to cook or anything or bake anything. And uh, I sometimes do it in, in the holidays or weekends, but, but most of the times it's someone else doing that, actually my kids. And um, so anyway, but and then I hear this music. It's like they already are in heavy music because, especially my boys, because they they really like uh, the superhero kind of uh, you know films and everything. They love Deadpool and there's always music underneath it. Luckily for us, that is a little bit more heavy, alternative and stuff like that. So they discover a we discovered Skillet through them. I had never heard of Skillet before until I actually heard a song underneath uh, one of the Marvel. <laughs> Uh, which 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 song? Curious. Um, I think. Um, Do you remember? Invincible, probably Invincible. I think. Oh my gosh! I cannot believe you just mentioned that band because we're okay. <laughs> I'm, just just a quick break. 
let's if 20 years ago i first discovered like my love for music actually came from skillet believe it or not really? so wow. yeah because because you know I, I was a i was just a kid in middle school and you know music was kind of like a new territory for me and then i discovered all these like these christian rock bands because skillet's known for that yeah, uh, topic no no yeah and then and they're still one of my favorite bands like today and just an influence on what i'm listening to so Wow, the, just the connection here. It's amazing. Of course, <laughs> yeah. your children have great taste in music already. <laughs> and the thing is, they are very much in the Marvel and the DC kind of stuff. And so are we. We love to watch those movies ourselves. So, it, it, the, the, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And the same goes with music. There's instruments in the house always. And, and you know, they see us play it. And so it's... Um, yeah, I think you know the boys are into playing guitar music, and my 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 oldest he started with um, Linkin Park, liking Linkin Park a lot, also because oh, yeah. it was leave those Marvel movies and stuff. Then he discovered Motown, so he is now his Motown phase. And <laughs> the youngest is actually really a metalhead. He just likes only heavy music, so that's really strange because he just only turned nine. And he doesn't like pop music, so uh, I've got the yeah. So yeah. He's, he's getting an early start. He's getting an early start. Yeah. Now that yeah. you see his taste right now at the, he's not even at double digits yet. Like now that you see his taste, like at a younger age, younger age, it's going to evolve over time. I, and I, I, you know, I can imagine, you know, you know, being a parent, like seeing the music taste just evolve, you know, yeah, and that's, that's lovely. Uh, you know, my, my older brother is a teacher. He just got certified to become, you know, a second grade teacher. And this was his yeah. first year. And seeing all the, you know, different tastes and music and art and movies and, you know, his kids. He calls them his kids. And yeah. it's just, I, I think it's just, I think it's amazing to see what the, you know, kids, the younger generation go through. Yeah. And I'm sure it's important for you to be an influence to them, you know, going forward. And I think you're doing just that. that Man, that, that'd be amazing. Touch back in like ten, you know five ten years and see what's the music taste. <laughs> yeah, I'm, totally. I'm, so, I'm also thinking about what will happen in the future. But the thing is, you know, music has always been for me growing up so important to go every phase of my life and and the hardships, but also the good times, you know. And uh, so you know, if I can can introduce them only for that reason already, that it will pull them through certain situations that they have something to hold on to to cry their heart out or to swear if they want to i don't care you know, just as long as they release their emotion and it gets a good vibe back eventually like healing process and and even the good times you know you also have to go through that in and um every sort of emotion you can find in music so i think that's the most i, I think it's a precious gift as as uh, an older generation you can give to a younger one who are your influences growing up Sorry, my influence is, well, you know, I grew up with amazing parents, actually, because my parents were almost like hippies. Uh, they weren't having the hippie lifestyle, but uh, they were very hippie-like because, well, they're very open-minded. They loved music, all kinds of music. They really inspired me to explore music in a very young age. Um, in our house, there was always music on the, you know, the radio was on or they were playing vinyl records or anything like that. So especially my dad. And um, I lived in Indonesia for a certain time for my pa parents' work. And um, I was about four years old and I've got a, four, a six, years, six year older brother and he got pocket money. And my parents said, well, you know, uh, I said, I want to have pocket money myself. I was pretty, um, well, you know, uh, smart ass. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> Especially when you have an older brother who's six years older, you, you, you learn faster everything. So I said, I saw his, uh, his spending patterns like, okay, you know, I would like to spend something and, but I don't have any money. So I told my mom, I want to have pocket money myself. And then she said, well, it's okay, but you can only spend it on music. So we went to the record store every weekend since that day that I told her. And I was allowed to buy cassettes because that's the only thing you can get in Indonesia, more or less. Um, so um, that was really like an exciting moment of the weekend starting. Yeah, I can buy cassettes. I can buy, I can spend something. And then I went there and then I was advised, of course, by my brother and my mother, well, what to buy. So I came home with the Moody Blues. I came home with Wars of the World. Uh, I came home with... Um, Chris Ria, you know, um, but also the, wow. Bon, but, but all kinds of music and, but also Boney M, which I loved as a kid very much. But and and I started my first real big love was actually uh, Olivia Newton-John, really the country music, and also wow. Greece, which is totally not what I'm doing nowadays. But I just fell in love with her voice, and I still love her voice. 
and she has been a huge made a huge impact for me to start wanting to sing because I was like oh my god how can you sound like her such an angel to listen to and I was really I was just there was a, a magical moment when I heard her sing so I think uh, that is what it brought me it brought me the, the love for music and to explore my own uh, way in music so that was I think the best thing you can do as a parent and I'm really glad that I, my parents uh, gave that to me isn't it interesting when you look back in your life to see the roots that you just grew up with? You know, it. I, I think it's just, it tells the story more, it, it's a complete way to tell the story. Because when you look back at your influences, it's, it almost, it ties in, in a way. And for yeah, me, perfect. like, for, yeah, for myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm a metalhead, you know, or, or both of us are. But, you know, I, I play violin growing up. And really? there's, yeah, I, I still have my violin. Yeah. You know, uh, my little sister, she's a, she plays viola. So music just runs in our family, like both of our families. And yeah. growing up, you see the tie in, you see the, it, it, it comes all together at the end. It's like, wow, I actually listened to this music when I was much younger, you know, growing up with Skillet and then, you know, with playing violin. And there's like a correlation between classical and metal. And, and now I'm sitting talking to you, you know, you guys have like the symphonic, you know, element in your music. It's just, I think it's amazing how everything just ties together, especially with their roots growing up. I think it's amazing that Olivia Newton-John was one of the singers that, you know, inspired you. Yeah, yeah. It was also a combination with the romance of the, of the, of the, of the film. I was totally in love with that film. So the first 10 years of my life, I played that cassette every day. It drove my parents crazy. I can sing every word for word still and know every lyric. <laughs> Do you still have it? Do you still have that cassette? I have it. Yes, I still have it. Yeah, yeah. I will never, I'll never throw it away because it was so important for me. And um, yeah, you know, those kind of things. And, you know, I'll tell you something else. I, at a certain point in my life, also listened a lot to Mariah Carey, which is a lot of people will like jaw like this. But uh, the thing is, she was for me like the Steve Vai among vocalists because she could do any notes. And uh, especially the first two records and like on emotions, which was, uh, I think, the second one. She high, she goes to the, the highest note there is, and I was just practicing every second of the day that I was free to get that note, and I'd learned myself how to sing. You know, I never had any lessons, and uh, I did try a few times, and every time they said, well, you know, you have the whole register, so uh, yeah, we can practice, but I'll probably listen, uh, try to learn you something, uh, how to sing, but there are many roads to Rome. And you learned yourself. And as long as you don't have any problems with your voice, you're just fine. So the, why are you taking lessons? I was like, okay, why am I taking lessons? I don't know. But uh, anyway, it, I, it taught myself. And I, I yeah, I drove my parents crazy doing it. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I loved every minute of it. Everyone who's listening right now, this is passion right here. You don't even need a teacher to do what you, what you want to do. That's amazing. So you got to, so you actually listened and reached your high soprano that yeah. way wow yeah, yeah. That's... but i must say that the highest notes you have to maintain and keep practicing that so as long as long as you do that on a very daily basis then you can keep that re register very you know like this uh, yeah oh, this is a screen like this <laughs> <laughs> and if it's you know it's a muscle you have to practice a lot so as soon as you don't start, when you stop with it, it will, you know, it will get diff more difficult to reach that note. But eventually, if you start practicing again, you you'll reach it again. Man, I just love that you still have that cassette. That's I think it's important <laughs> to. I'm I'm a very nostalgic person. I never throw anything away. You know, everything that I actually grew up with, I keep, and I just have this bag. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger over time. I'm like, why do I have all this stuff? You know. Uh, you haven't seen my room. I chose this wall because it's the only <laughs> clean wall I have. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's actually all throughout my room I, I you know i just moved in this place less than a year ago and everything i have like everything that's usually on my walls this is actually just new stuff but everything that's on my walls is usually just all nostalgic stuff and, and i keep it and then you know some of my friends say why do you have this stuff this is from like when you were like 10 or 11 but yeah you know it's i don't know i yeah. i don't know i don't know it's yeah. it's just a part of me I, people there are other people who don't I guess I don't I don't know what the best term to put this is is you know I don't want to say they they're ashamed of who they are because of all the things that they grew up with but everything that I grew up with it's a part of who I am. You know what I used to do? Yeah. Actually I think I, I think I still do this. Actually no no no. I don't do this anymore. But what I used to do <laughs> I used to, so I used to yeah, used so to. <laughs> when so when Blockbuster when Blockbuster was a thing and we yeah. would go and rent movies and everything else in between 
I would keep all the receipts. And uh, the closest person to my life is my stepbrother, who's not even blood related to me. And he would come, I would see him twice a year, twice a year. And we would go to Blockbuster and we would rent movies. And I remember one of the movies was Spice World. And <laughs> we kept the receipt. We kept, we just keep the receipts. The receipts just get piling up. This is from like the late nineties and we still have them. So I don't know. Oh that's, God. that's, that's right. just an example. You probably think oh, I'm crazy. Like, okay, I keep nostalgic, but that's like totally different. <laughs> well, I've, I've kept every linear, li uh, linear uh, of every yeah. show we did, you know, with, with, with the sign, like you're on yeah. this festival, that festival, uh, you know, it grows out of my room almost because so many I have, it's like huge what, pack and pile. What's your oldest one? Your first My one. The oldest one. Um, I think it was the one, the most, one of the most, um, the one that made most impression on me because it was the first festival we played at was Dynamo Open Air in, in Europe, in, in the Netherlands. At the time, that was the biggest meta festival in Europe. And it was the first time we played there. And uh, yeah, well, just an amazing story because we came there, we, did, we rented a car, completely yellow, and we ended up being parked between all those uh, you know, uh, uh, line, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, line, the line bus, uh, tour buses, and every buses, and yeah. all those buses were black, okay. you know. And we were yeah. in the canary yellow. <laughs> you guys had a yellow bus. So you guys had a yellow bus in the middle of all that. <laughs> <laughs> but those things come back when I think of that first festival. It was I met Typo Negative. I spoke with Peter Steele, which oh, is man. one of my That's heroes. A and he was so nice. He was such a nice, sweet guy. He took the time to, for this artist that nobody knew in America, of course. And he was backstage at Roadrunner, having an, a Dutch hamburger. And he said, I said, no, uh, what was it? Mayonnaise on it. And they put mayonnaise on it. So he talked about that. And, uh, and, and he was really nice to, telling me about his influences, like the Beatles he loved so much. And yeah, I'll never forget that day. It was amazing. <laughs> what year was that? That was in uh, 1997. Okay, you know now we're to t we're talking about uh, we're talking about reminiscing about old times and growing yeah. up with what we had what we what we grew up with. I'm sure you have. Uh, I know this is a blank wall. I totally get that. But I know it's, it's around you in the rest of the place that you're in, you have a lot of things that are of sentimental value, and you know I I really appreciate that you have that and. I'm um, I'm wondering what's the I guess I guess the question is what's the most valuable thing you have right now that that you cherish? Uh, that I cherish. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. I know. <laughs> I'm thinking really, really, really hard. Um, you know, I don't give give a lot. I don't care a lot. You know, I've got a lot of uh, records, like you know, like how many sold and everything. I hate those things. Actually, I think they're very, very <laughs> ugly most of the time. You know, it's never never put any effort into it. And the ones that did have any effort, they're so big that like they're you know like they're re replacing your ego on the walls. Like, okay, I can't put this on the wall. It's re it's ridiculous. But the thing that I like most, I think probably one of my first guitars I ever bought, my acoustic guitars. I think those kind of things are the ones that yeah, are the most important. And the picture that I have from Robert when we were uh, we were uh, in school together, and we were I started a school band, and he joined when he came to our school uh, halfway the, during the year, and eventually we became a couple, of course. But uh, I've got a picture that I that we got, you know, uh, in, uh, well that we were performing on that uh, that night, and I have just one picture that he just really goes. I'll show you a picture. One second. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure, that'd be great. <laughs> No worries. The frame is falling apart, actually. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. Wow. He still had hair, wow. though. So. <laughs> Man, I love that you have a frame, too, and everything. Yeah, it's pretty old, actually. The colors aren't original anymore. <laughs> All faded. But you it, know, it, these things are important to me. You know, I, I love to have that on... That's what I would like to display instead of the, the golden records and stuff like that, which I don't really care about. And, you know, you talked about touring as well. You know, this has been going on for within Temptation 24 years. What was your favorite part about touring? You know, now that you, well, not just you, a lot of people, everyone, artists, 
now that we kind of just kind of like let's take a step back, it's been kind of like a break. Not that anybody asked for it. Two years, you know, you know, two months into this quarantine, does it? Have you had a moment to just step back and just look at everything that you've experienced? Does it make you appreciate it more? Do you look at it differently? You know, I mean, what was your favorite part about it? There's food, there's fans, there's culture. There are, you know, Peter Steele. I mean, oh, my God, you got to meet yeah. some of the most influential <laughs> musicians. I mean, you're influential yourself. And just to meet somebody like that, I'm sure it's has one of the most positive effects anyone can ever have on someone else. Well, I, I, what I like most is, you know, uh, the interaction with the fans. That's something that I find really is something that I always, you know, to have that bite to win every heart in the in the room, you know, because yeah. especially, especially you know, they are not, especially when you're the underdog, you know, you're the strange duck, the how we call it in the Netherlands is uh, because a lot of times we are, you know, we are a crossover band. Sometimes we play in mainstream festivals, sometimes we play on a metal festival, where they find us maybe a little bit, uh, well. You know, not heavy enough sometimes. And, you know, so we're always the strange duck, how we say it. And, um, but I like to, I, I find, uh, I find um, the idea nice that I, there's always somebody out there who will, who didn't know us or didn't like us, but seen us live. Oh, actually pretty cool band. And that's, that's what I hope to achieve every time still when I go on stage. And, and that's always been my drive because um yeah we were not easily always accepted everywhere you know with our music because we were always trying new things and a little bit out of the out of um well you know and so it's it's um it's actually the time that i have with my indigo that i realized how much cool things we have seen and how many beautiful people we've met and how many you know that our life has been pretty pretty awesome you know that we're very we're one of the lucky ones that and happy that people liked our music eventually and that we could do this. So that's something that I've always realized because we always had to work for every every step of our career. So uh, like meaning working, like really had to put everything, you know, on the table to get where we wanted to go. So convince people, but also record companies and to, yeah, to do our own, to be able to do our own thing. And uh, so I think uh, with my Indigo, I start, there was always also the break that I needed f from the touring life. I really need to see which direction am I going? Am I still happy? Yeah. With you? Because my whole adult life has been with invitation. I, I only worked for a company like one and a half years. And then, uh, yeah, all of a sudden uh, we had a, a song that really went on the radio that people started playing, you know, uh, all of a sudden. Um, and it became a huge hit. So, and we were like, okay, but we were having our jobs besides the music. It was a hobby. And all of a sudden we are doing this full time. And uh, it felt really like, okay, let's see where it goes and we'll embrace it as far as we can. And if it stops, it stops and we'll find an, a, you know, a regular job, which is nice too, because everybody has their degrees and everything. But um, we never had to stop. And that's something we never thought would happen because we thought yeah you know in five years everything will blow yeah. over it will be a new band and but uh, yeah we somehow we, we we were able to uh still be here and that's uh that's uh yeah i'm still surprised about that <laughs> have your aspirations have your aspirations as a person or band changed or evolved since you first started in the industry um no, I, I just I, I think what we were afraid of is when you have a record company that they would try to change you with an A and R manager or something. But with, in all cases, actually, the A and R manager just let us be because they didn't understand the music scene we were in most of the time because it was such a strange part. Of, it wasn't the metal scene; it was a certain genre within the metal scene, and and we were one of the pioneers in that. So. Uh, so you know, with with uh, with uh, this primo front is what everybody how everybody called it. Uh, although not, not, none of the bands can be compared to each other, in my opinion. But anyway, they said. No, I agree. Like, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but anyway, you know, they did. It, they gave us the the space we needed to develop our own uh, our own music, and that was a that was pretty cool actually. So they, they left us alone actually. It's like okay, you do whatever you want to, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you need, and we'll try to see if we, it fits in our picture. And yeah, that's how it went, actually. So we didn't have to convince people from the record company most of the time. What about a legacy? Is that something that's important to you? Do you want to leave an imprint on what you do professionally and artistically? Well, the only thing I want to leave behind is something that I don't have to be embarrassed for. Meaning, like, sometimes, you know, um, I just want to be really 
I just want to stand behind this, the music I make. And uh, of course, looking back on certain songs, I'm not as proud of them as uh, most of them. I think they should not have ended up on the record. You know, you always have that. I think like even the painter has like, okay, the painting is never finished. That's just a little bit similar to this. It's like, okay, when I hear it now, it's like, oh my God, they have <laughs> these lyrics, you know, how could I write these lyrics? They're, 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 ah. Anyway, I'm not going to name any songs, but there are always things like that that will come afterwards, you know, and then I'm just, that's also making me eager still to make something that I hope, which is a little bit more timeless maybe. And, and I hope that people enjoy that. But yeah, you know, music is something like, it's a dirty word, I know, fashion, but you know, it's crazy when it comes and it's crazy when it goes. And that's that's with music, the same kind of thing. You know, when, when people hear, some, hear something for the first time, it's like, what's this, you know, this is so different. And when you're still doing the same thing after many years, it's like, are they still doing this, you know? So it, it, it's only for a certain moment that people will find certain kind of music cool. Uh, although there are some exceptions, of course, in the world, like the Beatles, probably, that a lot of new generations still like an Iron Maiden. But there's also a lot of music that people just forget about and will never listen to again. And I just hope we won't be belonging to that, that group of music. I hope there will be people will like it somehow. <laughs> you know, you talked about a, a different, uh, just a different part of the music. And I wanted to transition that into my indigo. It was a different part of you that I felt like you wanted to replace in Within Temptation, but couldn't. And it was just a, you tapped into a whole different new, like a new dimension of Sharon that I, I'm glad that I was able to explore and other people, you know, if whoever's listening, you know, I, I strongly recommend my Indigo. And I just think it's an amazing, it's just an amazing work of art that you put out and you was it about reflecting a different emotion that you it was is that it though you wanted to reflect a different emotion that you couldn't do in within temptation yeah. you talked about using my indigo as kind of like a break from everything yeah yeah I, I was really having a hard time when i came back from the hydra tour and we had been touring a lot and my father got sick and he died within the two years that i was actually on the day that i released my indigo that was also the reason i couldn't promote it afterwards anymore because um on the day he was uh, cremated, my album came out. So it was such oh a, gosh. and I was in complete, uh, I knew this could happen, of course, but I didn't think things would come together so much. And he was also one of the reasons why I started uh, writing for this album and started exploring new things. Because when he got sick, when I got the news about that, it was like three years before, um, I was really like on this crossroads, like, okay, I'm, I'm away from home so much and uh, I'm not seeing my kids as much as I want to. I didn't, don't get to see my parents at all, most of the time, you know, I'm flying in and out and uh, I felt really guilty about that. So I really had, I needed time to reflect on my own way of spending my time because like Exhibit said to me, and he was, I, I love the man because he has so much wisdom. And he said to me, he's like, you know, no girl, you can only spend your time once. You can buy anything, but you know, you can't buy time. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a good wow. one, you know? And I, and that's something that's, that really got stuck in my head when I was talking to him about life in general. And uh, so, um, yeah, that was something that I kept thinking about. Like, okay, how, wanna, how do I want to spend the rest of my life? Because, you know, my whole adult, adult adult life i've been in wood invitation i love wood invitation it's part of who i am but is it something that i want to spend as much time in as i have been doing or do i want to spend also some time to reflect on the things that are happening now in my life which i can't put in wood invitation and so the band will need a break anyway and i need a break from everything uh from everything i was doing so and especially to have more self-reflection because i had to deal with my father then on one side and then some other stuff that i had to deal with with personal stuff that i need to you know sometimes you have to clean up your mess behind you that you've been running away from <laughs> and i yeah. did all of that with my indigo actually and it helped me in so many ways and so for me it was uh probably one of the most important things i've d done so far because it took away so much rubbish from my past so you know i man thank you for sharing that you know uh, uh your father you know rest in peace and uh I'm, you know it's the battle we go through in life when it comes to losing someone you know you know i've had my shares of course but and you talked about i don't know I don't know if this was an interview, you said this and you talked about my indigo being a smaller, much more direct 
being more personal, being more vulnerable. Yeah. Does it does it kind of just help you like <sighs> exhale? Kind of just now you got all that out there. Yeah. That you know, you're my indigo. That it's. I, I would love to hear more, but of course that's just a fan in me because you know I'm sure that's definitely something that just a part of you that you explore that you're you're happy with. You know, how, how do you feel? Do you feel like it was it was needed? It's. It was needed for me. I needed to like uh, somehow heal in a way, and I needed to yeah. confront my demons. Also, it's like okay, you can run away from everything that you hate in life, or hated in life, or the things that went wrong. But eventually, you need to make up the balance and see, you know, what can I change, and how can how do I come to terms without always being angry still about it? Because I'm fed up being angry about certain things, and uh, so it was. Um, a lot of things also, because my dad wasn't a talker, for instance, and I am, I'm somebody who goes right at it. I, I'll talk to you about the things that are bothering me. And we just, you know, we didn't, uh, so we had a hard time dealing with each other because he couldn't handle my emotions and I couldn't handle his silence. So I was, you know, and he was away a lot when I was growing up and I needed him really a lot when I was, especially in, in my pu puberty. And uh, he wasn't there and I was really resenting him for it, but he came back when he became a grandpa and he was there actually when I was away. And I certainly saw like an image of myself in him, like, okay, I'm doing the same thing my dad is, you know, He's, he was away so much and I hated it and I'm doing the same thing. So I need to find a better balance in everything that I'm doing. And I talked to him within the last few months that, that he uh, was alive. I talked with him on a daily basis because he just lives one house behind our street. So I could walk to him every day. And we talked a lot, more than ever in our lives. And it was a very beautiful uh, period of time. And it was very necessary because I could close that chapter also. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, you know, it was a healing time. And I, I think that's what you hear also on the songs, I think, in a way. I also think this goes into effect with Resist because it took five years between the last album and Resist. And I don't know if, it, if the fan base actually even said this because I remember at the, at the time the last album came out, there was like, oh man, Within Temptation might just hang it up after this. Yeah. But then you, but then this segment, this segment we just talked about, about your yeah. growth as, a, as an individual and how you released My Indigo, did it also help you kind of just refocus everything back into where you are right now? Because, I mean, Resist, I think you guys came back better than ever. Not that you guys were ever gone, but no. you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah, it was the longest totally. time in between, and there's a growth in between that you discovered about yourself. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Because of the, I think my Indigo also helped me, you know, look at our music in a different way. I had to discover... Uh, other kinds of music to come back to with invitation again, strangely, you know, because sometimes you're just stuck in the kind of music you are and you need to explore different music that you might not eventually end up making, but it will enrich your view on music and how certain things, dynamics work. And I took from a lot of things from my Indigo actually to the Resist album, you know, because uh, not only me, but also the producer I worked with also worked always with us on with invitation. I was really ha happy that Daniel was going to go through this with me because you know it was like a complete healing process he was like almost like my shrink <laughs> during this time there's two daniels and isn't there there's daniel barkman daniel. and gibson so only, now daniel gibson is the one who is always have we've been working with him for 15 years and i also worked with him on my indigo so okay. he was huge help to do this for me and um and of course robert's always in the in the background also you know uh, also with this project he was also looking over my shoulder like okay you know, it's like, what are they doing? And, you know, thinking along and totally understanding the, the phase I was going through. And, and they all went through it with me. So that was really nice. I had backup. And um, so that helped me a lot. And uh, what was it I wanted to say about that? Um, help me, help me, help me, help me. Yeah, well, the things, the, the, the production, everything, and the listening to different music, we could also implement that again in the Resist album because it became the old and new together, like uh, certain things of production that made it more crispy, more new, refreshing kind of sound-wise um, and still have the heaviness of wood invitation. I think those things colliding and merging together, really working out on the new album of Resist, I think. Yeah, you came with my Indigo and then Resist, just release, releasing them back to back years. I feel like, I feel like it's just almost like a re reignition of your career. It's uh, and you know we always go through the personal battles, and I believe that's shown. And you put out, I think, your best work in the last album and the 
and with my indigo. I think Firelight, I don't know if this was true. Was Firelight originally meant to be for my indigo? But yeah, then it, it but then it had that within temptation, you guys put it on there. Yes. Yeah. And I saw the similarities. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And and uh, actually, the guy who sing it, don't you like his voice? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jas Jasper Staveling. He's yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. singer from a band called Arid. It's more alternative rock. He used to be in that kind of uh, of the band Arid. And um, yeah, I'm just in love with his voice. And I was really happy that he was, because we were in a TV program together, which was called uh, Passion for Music or Love for Music. And um, I knew he was going to be in there, so I ex they asked me if I wanted to join. I, I never do te television programs unless I think I can, you know, can do something positive with music or something that isn't just about the entertainment. And I heard he was there as well as Case Choice. I don't know if you know that band, but also a very good band from the from Belgium. She's living. Uh, he is living actually. The the singer is living now in America, and. Um, those two were participating in this program. I was like, okay, if they're participating, why not me? And I was like, and, and they convinced me. <laughs> to uh, what was the What was the name of that Belgian artist? Uh, Lee, oh, he's called um, uh, Jasper, Jasper Staverlink, and uh, the other one is Case Case Choice. Case Choice. K not Case, I, but K K from. Uh, K okay, K with a K, with a K. Yeah, K. Yeah. I have, um, so my family's massive. I actually have a uh, family living in Italy and Belgium. So, oh, really? and they're, wow. yeah, and they're, uh, they're all about the music culture out there. Um, so I will definitely, they're probably, I'm, I am 1000% sure they know about the <laughs> yeah, artist you mentioned. So yeah, it was a, yeah. like a very big program on television that everybody was talking about because it was well, a lot of Belgian musicians. It was only one uh, external foreign bands allowed and they asked me it's like oh this big big compliments <laughs> yes i'll join <laughs> yeah no it was a really nice program to do and I, it was really really about music and that was really the lovely part of it actually man we covered a lot of awesome topics and i feel like this conversation gone for hours which i love <laughs> you know I, real real quick though uh, before i i don't really uh, have just a little bit of time but I wanted to talk about entertain you really quick. Did you? Yeah, of uh, did you? Did, did you guys record that before? Obviously, before, before. the quarantine. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. And then, did you plan this release date before everything happened, or was this, you know, yes, it was already something scheduled. that changed? And yeah, we felt like okay. Normally, when you release anything, you do it a combination of a tour because that makes sense. You promote the thing that you've just released, and that was not happening now. But we were having looking forward to release something so quickly and we didn't want to wait like maybe so many months and before finally this tour is going to happen or any festivals and uh so we felt like okay everybody you know also fans knew this date was coming up so we felt like you know just just let's just release it and everybody has something to look forward to and we'll see later hopefully uh, you know we can play it live uh, soon one day <laughs> Oh, real quick about the live streaming. How have you been uh, keeping up with that? Is it something you may want to do yourself? Maybe live streaming with the band or because uh, a lot did, of bands are doing that nowadays. We, now did, we're home. Did, the, uh, we did the stay at home, uh, you know, with the, what Chris Martin started. We yeah. got the microphone from Amy Lee and I gave it to Taria, uh, who used to be in Nightwish. And right. so, you know, we just uh, participated in that way. So I did acoustic, um, acoustic stay at home. Um, uh, live streaming and what we also did that broadcast a lot of old shows like from the, the festivals we played at last year and the years before but also one of the big shows we did uh, Black Symphony I don't know if you know that uh, recordings yeah, I do I do yeah we, yeah <laughs> we also broadcasted that so everybody could be sitting in from every part of the world and having their popcorn and we could send messages while watching together to this live streaming and it was a lot of fun and uh, a lot of people participated, so it was, uh, yeah, it was really nice. But we've ended that now. We did, uh, I think, five uh, broadcasts, things like that, four or five. And awesome. Every, you know, all the focus now is on the single because that's, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time to prepare everything. So. You know, I just interviewed Insomnium last week, and they were actually one of the bands to do the whole live streaming. They did the whole live streaming in the in the empty venue, and then they streamed it for the fans. I thought oh. that was very interesting, you know, and there are other bands who are also coming along on this ride. Do yeah. you think, do you think, um, do no you problem. think the, <laughs> sorry, <No. laughs> this is, we, we, there's just so much talking. It's just, I'm just excited yeah, to get it all out. 
I, I wonder, as an artist, do you think the quarantine-induced live streaming surge, is it going to affect the touring musician business going forward? Do you still see bands doing this even after this is over? No, I think people will probably be very much fed up with it because it's going to take a little <laughs> bit. Well, I'm already fed up with it. You know, it's like all these acoustic versions of stuff. I, you know, I want to play the real guitar. I want to play the whole real feel of the you know roaring sounds and everything. You know, I want to feel the energy. So I'm fed up with it actually. Uh, so, but <laughs> good answer. I, mean, I did the real thing. But you know, even standing in front of an empty venue, come on. You know, I miss. That's one of the things we do it for, for the interaction. That's the most important thing for an artist. Of course, we're giving up, you know, it's a way to do it. And maybe we'll do it eventually also with the whole band, but uh, I'm not sure yet, you know. At this moment, we, uh, I just want to write new songs to complete the album, the new album that will eventually happen. And to have a nice follow-up for this song. So uh, that's something that's the, uh, the biggest focus after this, actually. You know, it's different if I see Within Temptation, like Sharon, in, in person, it's a, it's a different source of energy as opposed to seeing you guys on screen. Of but of course. course, you know, yeah, of course, it, but it's it's the time. But that I, that's a very good point. I love how you said, no, we're going to, uh, you know, I want to get this over with, put this behind <laughs> us and just go on what we want to do. I think that's the best answer you could ever come up with. That's very simple okay. to the point. Super. I love that. <laughs> Now, you've talked about uh, Ataria, like uh, artists that you've collaborated with. You've also collaborated with Avantasia, Timo Tolki. I don't know if I said, is, said yeah, the name yeah. right. You know, yeah. you've a lot of artists. Is there an artist that that you would like to collaborate with that you haven't already? Doesn't have to be metal, obviously. No, of anyone. course. No, anyone. That's difficult. Um, uh, there's so many people I love, you know. And so it's for me, it's always... The most important thing, and I, because I get this question actually a lot, is like, how do you choose someone you want to, you know, want to collaborate with? Well, it, it all comes from the music, you know. We always look at, okay, what kind of song have we written? Um, you know, do we like it as it is, or do we think someone could add something to it? Because I'm not afraid of adding another person to it. I'm, I, I enjoy it because I think you always learn from different people, and I love to expand my music friends. So, um, so. We love to collaborate also for that reason. And it's always about the music. For us, music is everything. So if the music needs something like a heavy voice from a guy, I'll ask a cool guy who can have that specific sound that we're looking for. And hopefully this person will have time. Of course, you have always a few names in mind. Sometimes there's only one. So you're really hoping, like, oh, God, I really hope he or she does it. And so, but we've been very lucky so far. So I have to, one, two, three, that's wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to maintain that luck um so yeah those kind of things uh we've been very fortunately but it always comes from the music if you weren't a musician what would you be doing right now something in fashion maybe but i tried it a little while and i love fashion and i wanted to be a fashion designer uh, when i was a kid because i didn't think music was an option especially if, you know people around me said like you know you won't earn a dime in music, and you have to have meat on the table or bread on the table. How do you say it? <laughs> so, uh, I can't tell you how many, uh, how that common that statement is. It's coming from, yeah. you know, both of our families are involved in music. I, I can't yeah. imagine how many times we heard that in our lives. Yeah, totally. And my, my, I can't say that to my kids. Like, yeah, yeah, but you're in music. So, yeah, I know, but it was really hard. <laughs> Because they say, yeah, I want to be a musician. Yeah, right, okay. Well, you should do that, but have a second plan. You know, have a plan B, because that's something you're going to need. Because if you want to make music you like, you need a plan B. Yeah, I think plan B is always a, it's always a good idea. Hey, that, <laughs> that, that's okay, because, because you talked about the fashion. Uh, the, you want to be a fashion designer. Do you get to pick your outfits when you go on stage? I'm sure you, within Temptation, they have their own, like, uh, image. And... You know, you have your different outfits every, you know, every show you do. I, I think that can go into effect as well. Well, that's what I do. I also have my own merchandise line. Like I, I just, um, I would um, let them be made in the Far East. At a certain time, it was around, I think it was around the heart of everything. We made a whole collection of ourselves, a uh, clothing collection uh, with an invitation, like really blouses and everything, and which yeah. was really nice. But a lot of time went into it. And I felt like, okay, you know, I'm a singer. I love to make music. I want to create music. And I don't want to make a next fashion line or something. I shouldn't be, you know, be everything at once. I just stick to what I do best. And that's make music. At least that's, you know, that's the most important. And 
I like doing it at the side, so the merchandise, I'm always watching over everybody's shoulder, always driving everybody crazy. Sometimes there's still some things that I think I wouldn't, you know, I would never wear. But, you know, they say, yeah, <laughs> yeah this, you know, people like to have this kind of t-shirts. Okay. Then, you know, I go along and we'll see how things go. And if it doesn't, it just gets out of the merchandise then. And, um, but also the way I dress myself on stage, I work with a lot of, um, well, of course, I, I, I do the styling myself most of the time, like 90%. And sometimes I hire somebody or, or nowadays I work with this Dutch designer called Jan Bulo. I love him. He's a good friend of mine nowadays. Shout and, out. Yeah. <laughs> and he's amazing. And uh, so uh, we design together my dresses, my outfits. And so that's, I'm really happy about those kind of things. And that it gives me the space to, you know, have my own ideas and he's still willing to make it. Also, of course, with his own identity still in there and he he the, the guys have the more regular kind of collection that he makes for um all his musicians that he works for so it's it, but for my own i want to, want to have my own um well idea a little bit how i want to do that because i have a specific way how i see myself of course do you have that that clothing line you mentioned do you still have that is it still uh well we, i still have like in the storage i have a lot of uh, you know things that never were <laughs> okay 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 <laughs> but look at that you, you, yeah you you're doing it though you're you're doing it you're doing the fashion design you yeah, in a way yeah. and you're in still do, playing the music that you want to do yeah exactly so i have both worlds but i you know i love making music so much more than doing fashion you know uh stick to your you know, profession i think sometimes so uh, that's what i'm you know but still i can't can't help myself, you know, because I know how it works. And I, I've been in the uh, fashion industry. I did, uh, I did, a, how do you say it? I did college, fashion college, some kind of fashion college it's called. And like I did an my bachelor, yeah, bachelor degree also for fashion management eventually. But I know how to make a complete collection, how to sew, how to make the patterns for everything. I learned it all and I didn't like the making part of it, just the designing part. So I was always like asking my friends, if you make my part, I'll design something for you guys. And that's how we did it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I made, I, sew, I, sew, I was sewing this, you know, do you like it? And it's like, oh, really nicely done, Sharon. Not, not like your normal stuff that you normally do. <laughs> <laughs> so we were swapping our assignments like that. So I was, uh, it was an easy job for me at the time in school. Yeah, you're accessing your talents. You're util utilizing the best way you can. I, it's, yeah, it's great. I Keep doing that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> This is the last part of the interview. This is my favorite part. I'm going to put you on the spot. Last time, I promise. I'm going to read a couple lyrics. Okay. I'm going to see if you know your own songs. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't do this. Okay. This may okay. or may not air, okay? I yeah. may. I'm Okay. I may throw in a My Indigo lyric in there, okay? okay. Just letting you know. I'm going to start you off. I'm going to start you off easy, okay? <laughs> easy. You're going to probably think about, okay, this is too easy. My soul on fire, burning desire. Make no mistake, because oh. <laughs> the stakes are getting higher. I already know. <laughs> Go I'm ahead. I'm you, of course. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I'm throwing it way back. One by one, they died. A, ma a massacre that took all night. They had no chance. It was no fight. You can't kill what has been killed before they died. Uh, that's candles. Gatekeeper. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You can say whatever you want on this. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh my god, I didn't play that song for ages. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna have you make your uh, rethink your set list now. Look at that. All right. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. 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 Here's a song that I don't know. I'm gonna see a reaction to this. Never thought this day would come so soon. We had no time to say goodbye. How can the world just carry on? Uh, is it our farewell? Yeah. Oh, phew. God, thank God. <laughs> is that is that that has a guitar solo in there, doesn't it? Yeah, I hate that guitar solo. I really hate that guitar solo. I really, really, that was really pushed down. That's only the one of the, one of the few things that was pushed down our throat. You know, it's like okay, uh, that was was recorded when I was away just a little while, and I came back it's like, what's this? What a <laughs> ugly, ugly guitar solo that is! Like. Dee -dee 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 sorry but yeah you know i like it things, you like it well, i'm happy i'm sorry for anyone who does like it. i think it's too clean it should be more raw it'll be you know or something else i don't know but anyway i didn't like it very much i still don't like it i still hate it all right but, it's uh, on the record i like the rest of the song though 
<laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> if I had told you, okay, if I had told you, you would have listened. You had stayed. You would be here forever. Never went away. Bittersweet. Yeah, that was in the German edition. That wasn't in the original one. I, no, it's, that, a, it's a B-side track. Yeah, I love that song. Um, winter has come for me. Can't carry on. The chains of to my. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think I think I got you on a roll here. All right. <laughs> I relinquish, I relinquish to your powers from your grasp. I just can't hide. I miss the danger. I had to conquer. You made me feel alive. Aquarius. Yeah. You know your song. You're good. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Hold on a second. So tell me where the nomad wanders on. Is it in a world untraveled? Is it where the music plays, filling up the empty space? It's where you left me fragile. This is my favorite song that you have written, period. Yeah. Oh God, uh, someone like you, my indie Yeah, girl. yeah. It's actually between it's the story of my parents, how they met. That's that's what I'm telling there. It's like how they met. It's like it's that's uh, yeah, the whole lifeline more or less somehow in a, in a more artistic way, their story. Yeah, it's uh, it's my favorite one. Not that it's oh, it's cool. it's a work of art. Um, okay, your sacrifice goes through your mind, but nothing is wasted. You've made it now. You rise again, breaking out each step you've taken. You've paid the price. It's hard not singing it. This is weird saying it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, think, I, know. think um, I don't know how, I, I don't want to give it away. I think it's uh, the, heart of, the heart of everything. Um, can, I can, you repeat, can, you, can, you, can you repeat again? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, your sacrifice goes through your mind, but nothing is wasted. You've made it now. You rise again, breaking out. Each step you've taken, you've paid the price. Whole world is watching. Whole world is watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With David, uh, David from Soul Asylums on that. Yeah, cool. Yep. Huh? He was a really nice guy. Yeah, he was an amazing guy actually. <laughs> I love the, I love the, I love the guests you have on your tracks. It's perfect. Okay, I don't know if I read this already. I think I have. No, I don't think I have. I pay my dues, all for truth. Can't leave it here and leave it here. And leave it here, forgotten. Oh we um, we talked about this briefly. Yeah, it, it, this is um, oh god, um, the song with with Jasper. Um, hmm? The song with Jasper, right? Think, think. Uh, how do you illustrate this? How do you? Uh, I don't know. Can you sing it, say it again? One more time. One more time. Just I pay. I pay my dues, all for truth. Can't leave it here, and leave it here, and leave it here, forgotten. Yeah. That is the the the, the song on the, the last record, record, right? Yeah. Oh, god. Yeah. They, oh my god, what's the name? You know. Sorry. I'll 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 give it to you. It's Firelight. <laughs> yeah, fine. That's what I mean. The, what, yeah. the song is yes, but yeah, I couldn't yeah, get to yeah. the name. Well, I was close. <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. I, I I'll give you that one. Okay. I think this may no no no. This may be the last one. Okay. Are they themselves to blame? The misery, the pain. Didn't we let go? Allowed it. Let it grow. If we can't, oh, yeah, we're yep. Yeah, yes, you did great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. The, when I when I threw it back, when I threw it back, I I kind of I kind of kind of had you made like, had you rethink like, oh, did I write that? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It was more like, what's the next line? What's the next line? That's, that's how... <laughs> then I'll come to the chorus, and then I'll know which song it is. <laughs> All right. So we've reached the end of the man. This is great. I I, I really think we could have talked for hours, but thank you, Sharon. Uh, for coming on uh, Interview Under Fire, you know, uh, be safe, you know, take care of your family, take care of your friends. Um, hopefully we see you on the road when you guys come back here. And uh, uh, everyone who's listening right now, Resist is out now on Spine Farm Records. Entertain You is also out for streaming. Pick those up. Um, you know, support these guys, support Within Temptation. Pick up My Indigo as well. Uh, Sharon and Within Temptation will be back on the road. Sharon, thanks so much for your time and hope we awesome. talk to each other. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thank you so much.
Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. And also, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can find us at Interview Under Fire at Facebook or at Instagram. Or you can write us directly at schwag at interviewunderfire.com. That's S-C-H-W-A-G at interviewunderfire.com. Or Rezablade, that's R-E-Z-A-B-L-A-D-E at interviewunderfire.